Hello, everybody. Uh, today, uh, we're going to have a special guest, uh, Dr. Fujian Zain, uh, a psychotherapist. Uh, we're going to talk with her regarding some subjects that are uh, related to OBGYN and to her expertise. Uh, we're going to talk today about uh, something called postpartum depression. Uh, as you know, I'm an OBGYN. Uh, we have a lot of patients who deliver a baby, and after delivery, uh, they have issues. Uh, sometimes they have postpartum blues postpartum depressions. Uh, some of them I see myself, some of them I refer to a specialist uh, for either medical treatment or for uh, therapy such as psychologist or psychotherapist. Uh, sometimes these are mild and can be managed. Uh, sometimes uh, could be uh, very difficult and uh, the patient or the mother cannot even take care of the baby. Uh, occasionally it could be severe, sometimes even psychosis. Uh, we're gonna talk to our uh, uh, expert today, uh, Dr. Fujian Zain. Dr. Hello. Zain, hello, how are you doing? Good to see you. I'm doing great, thank you. It's good to see you, Dr. Nain. Yeah, so uh, this um, subject I talked to about uh, postpartum depression, probably you might see more than I do because, uh, uh, well, that's your, your specialty. Uh, these patients uh, uh, sometimes it could be very severe. Uh, if you can tell us, what do you recommend? I mean, usually I, when I see these patients, uh, I tell them, see a specialist, see a therapist, I might start on some medicine. Um, a lot of time uh, they have family issues that this happens. A lot of them, they don't have anybody's support. Uh, sometimes there is nobody uh, uh, to, to help them. Some of the husband is, might not be around. Uh, but a lot of them, just the stress of taking care of a baby could be the reason. Uh, tell us how you would help with this situation. What's it if the blues and depression different? Uh, what can you tell us about this? Absolutely. So I would like to first uh, concentrate on distinguishing between what a normal baby blues would be and, and the symptoms that people usually have versus actually a postpartum depression. Uh, so baby blues are <clears throat> uh, almost like they happen maybe a couple of days to a week or two only. Um, people might have mood swings, definitely anxiety, it's a new baby, all the, the stress that they have to go through, sadness, irritability, obviously they're not sleeping well, so that could also be the irritability is part of that, like low, low tolerance on anything that would show up, feeling overwhelmed, they'd be crying, they have less uh, concentration, and they might have some appetite problem or trouble sleeping. Uh, but when we're actually looking at a postpartum depression, it becomes much, much more severe. The signs and the symptoms become severe and they're longer. And sometimes they'll be between six months to two years. Um, and sometimes you'll see the sense of the postpartum, actually the depression starting within the pregnancy and it will go through uh, kind of like postpartum. For uh, the postpartum depression, you will really experience depressed mood or severe mood swings excessive crying all day, most hours of through the day. One of the signs of it is also a difficulty bonding with the baby. Um, you know, most of the mothers, they've been looking so much forward to having their baby. And then I've watched a uh, woman who the baby comes in and they get repulsed by it. And they'll tell me in secret, like, I don't want to say this and I won't show it but I get enraged when the baby is on my body or trying to have me. Let me interrupt you. I do see those patients that baby delivers. I say, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to touch it or, you know, I don't want to look at it. Does that relate to postpartum depression or is it just something, usually it passes within like an hour or two, I see that they start bonding. Is that something to be concerned I, you know, with a patient or usually they do well after that? Well, after that, the concept of not knowing, having, um, a, a, you know, a being, suddenly and full of blood and uh you know not not clean to be put on your body True. at the time that you are in pain and you just your body is uncomfortable is a very different reaction it could be a normal reaction True. but i'm talking about after all like you take him home and then the bond you know the baby needs bonding with you and the mother is constantly pushing it away or it's enraged when the baby yeah. needs her yeah and also these uh, days just you know for our, our viewers uh the policy of the hospital is, is skin to skin right away. So when babies delivers, it got become on the, on, the, on the mother, skin to skin, breastfeeding is possible. It used to be not like that. The baby would go to the warmer and they clean the baby. So maybe some of that becomes more stressful for, for some mothers in that regard. Very much. I've heard mothers who actually say that I kind of like leave my body 
because I'm forced to have this and I don't want to, and it doesn't look good. So I've had, they've had experience, so kind of like an out of body experience where they're going, they watch themselves because they're just not ready yet. This is all too new for them. It's a new experience. Um, going back to the postpartum, they get withdrawn from family and friends because of the amount of um, anger and agitation and, and uh, low tolerance that they have. But also people who have postpartum depression, they feel guilty. Like they think they sh this shouldn't be, these feelings should not be there. So they want to hide their guilt and they remove themselves. It's almost like they feel ashamed to say these things to their family and friends that this is how I experience yeah, it. Yeah, that's why you see, usually they feel guilty about it. Yeah, everybody's, you know, trying to congratulate you. They're all excited about you having a baby and you're not excited. So, you know, people go through the shame. They have loss of appetite or eat, eat too much. They have instability of sleeping. They have insomnia. Uh, overwhelming fatigue, loss of energy. They sometimes they sleep on the wrong hours, and they don't have any pleasure. Um, these are all signs, symptoms of, uh, you know, depression. The, I think the, the part it becomes the hopeless, the worth, worthlessness, shame, guilt, and the inadequacy. Sometimes that it becomes also danger, where the this is extreme, you guys, I'm telling you. Uh, but they have, they have the idea of either I want to die or I want the baby to die. You know, let I me interrupt you. I've, I've seen that a couple of times in the last 20 years in my practice, maybe twice I saw that. I, I thought maybe it was like psychosis or maybe something else, but they become um, a threat to the baby. And uh, sometimes you have to take, you know, take the baby away. Uh, you have to call the Department of Children's Services uh, because we see that they become, uh, uh, not just rejecting that that could be a harm to the baby or to themselves, of course. Uh, and those sometimes need to be uh, for sure on medicine and uh, uh, hopefully they do better eventually. Yes, the recur recurrent of thoughts of death and suicide is part of the depression. But you're absolutely right that if it's not treated, then uh, the chemicals in their body becomes uh, so extremely changed that they might become psychotic. And then in those senses, they hear voices that says, kill, kill, kill. And uh, then they try to figure out ways of killing, which um, you could see the psychosis, then you know they think everybody's against them. So in those senses, you'll see the complete chemical change of the deep depression as it becomes worse. So you can imagine um, not only for them what they go through, but what everybody else around them also goes through uh, for the system of the family. If they, you know, if they have other children, you know, their spouse, uh, their you know original family who's around them, everybody becomes a part of the system where they're trying to take care of the mother, but also they will uh, blame the mother or shame the mother for being. Uh, this way and this is why a lot of times this it's not being shared with other people because of the blame and the shame and it's so important for uh, the women and everybody who's watching that knows and sees this to really be gentle with the mother and have them really seek help because this is this is something that is treatable you know it I know it this is treatable now, as far as taking help, do you think they should see a therapist first, see a psychiatrist for medication? Do I, as OBGYN, or someone put on some antidepressant temporary till they see a specialist? What do you recommend to be the first step if somebody feels that they have depression? Uh, do you think they should be started on some uh, medicine by the OBGYN or see a specialist at first? What is the, what is, what is the recommendation? My recommendation when people are giving psychotropic medication, to be honest with you, doctor, is that if, if it's that severe, I prefer to go to a psychiatrist because each person have their own specialty. True. You know, the dr drug reps come in to explain all of it to the specialists. Uh, so the amount of information that general doctors or OBGYNs might have about all of the psychiatric modes might not be, yeah, so you'd be amazing for regular depression. I would really go back to you at first, which is the OBGYN, because you are the one who would really look at the, the depression and everything else that you know. Then it would be my suggestion is to go to a psychiatrist, because if there are also other medication that the other the person is taking, they have to be into a, uh, taken into account. And uh, some of the psychotropic medication or antidepressant medication might have an adverse um, effect like they would you know they might give you antidepressant and then suddenly it shows up as a bipolar and manic True. state True. so True. for that purposes i prefer 
to send, uh, you know, to refer to a psychiatrist. The therapy does something else. Psychotherapy, what it does for them is to start working on not blaming themselves, not going, letting go through the shame, asking for resources and help, bringing the family together, bonding not only the mother and the child and the other children, bonding also the mother and the husband, the father together again. So it's like taking the hand of that person and slowly but surely reuniting her to the rest of the family. These are skills which also need to be done with a lot of unconditional love and regards and acceptance, which at that time, everybody else in, this, in the sense, the circle of the family might not be able to be that patient or they might worry or you know if the mother's saying i'm going to kill me and myself they all get like perturbed and they don't know what to do um so sometimes the psychotherapist is the only person who's holding the mother's hand and you know, you know kind of like with gentleness taking them and transitioning back into their body into the system and into their motherhood actually okay perfect that makes sense uh as they say it takes a village to raise a baby i guess you need the mother the father the doctor grandparents cousins and hopefully uh, anybody who can help them. I really appreciate your time. Uh, we're going to close this subject at this point. Uh, where we're going to say bye for this segment. I'm going to come back in a little bit uh, soon. I'm going to talk about different subjects. Thank you very much.